Hello and welcome to Morning Prayer. I'm Phil Manson, and I'm glad we can start our day together with the Lord. Yesterday, I introduced the idea behind Morning Prayer. You see, in 1985, Kathy and I were in an automobile accident on I-70, just east of St. Louis, where our little Datsun 210 flipped several times. We ended up in a small town hospital in Highland, Illinois, where we spent the night. When we woke up the next morning, the first voice to greet us was that of a Catholic sister praying over the hospital loudspeaker. Neither one of us remembered what she prayed, but when our world had been turned upside down, her prayer reminded us that God was very present and his peace very real. While coronavirus continues to dominate the news, we have elections on our mind as well. COVID-19 isn't the only thing that makes people nervous these days. The Apostle Paul has a response for our times. In Philippians chapter 4, he said, Rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again, rejoice. Let your gentleness be evident to all. The Lord is near. Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition with thanksgiving, present your request to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. So let's pray together. The Heavenly Father, the first word of the morning is rejoice. So we praise you for your greatness and your goodness. We praise you for your faithfulness in the thick of the fears that surround us. You are God Almighty, and nothing takes you by surprise or catches you off guard. We praise you for you are the God who is near, promising not only to be with us, but to live in us in the person of your Holy Spirit. We thank you, Father, for forgiveness and redemption through your Son, Jesus Christ. We are so grateful for your peace, which does transcend all understanding, because it, ha it does have a way of guarding our hearts and setting our minds on the one who grants eternal life to all who believe in him. We lift up our government leaders to you, Lord. During this election year, they've had difficult decisions to make over these past few days and weeks often having to make decisions in the moment, fully aware that their action might be unpopular and open to criticism, but necessary to contain the spread of this virus. May we be a people who practice gentleness to all, even as we put into practice the principles of protection for this short span of time in order to prevent the further spread of this virus. Father, right now there are 50 confirmed cases in Ohio, and our prayer is that there not be 51. In the past, we've really never given a pass. In in the past, we've never really given a passing thought to the things we touch, or the air our children or grandparents breathe. But these days, we're left wandering. May this wandering not paralyze us but make us more aware of our surroundings. Make us more aware of the things that can touch and contaminate our hearts and our relationship with Jesus Christ. So today is yours, Lord, and we thank you for it. May we live today rejoicing in you, and I say it again, rejoice. In the name of Jesus we pray. Amen. I invite you to join us to tune in tonight at 6 p.m. for Evening Hymn with Aaron Van Balkenberg. God bless you. Have a wonderful day.